Explosive! Welcome to Explosive Enterprises. About 10 years ago, someone online built an Airsoft SPAS-12 using the internals of a Marzen M1100, and while it was kind of neat, it clearly didn't work well. We're not sure what happened to that dorky looking kid, just kidding, that was me. I sold the gun to a guy who had eventually become part of the team, and when he brought it by my house last year, I decided it was time for us to rebuild it to more modern standards and restore it to its proper glory. I mean, everyone knows the SPAS-12. It's an iconic fixture of movies and video games thanks to its aggressive appearance, the stylish overfolder stock, which means that airsofters mistake literally any shotgun with an overfolder for a SPAS-12, and the hybrid semi-auto and pump operation intended to allow optimal functionality with both buckshot and less lethal ammunition. The SPAS-12 doesn't have a lot of actual history to talk about. Franke designed it in the late 70s and began manufacture in 1979, seeing limited law enforcement and military sales as well as some importation into the US until 1994. It had no notable military users and no standout examples of combat use, but Hollywood seemed to just love the thing, and so a legend was born. I mentioned that the real SPAS-12 was both semi-auto and pump, and that's pretty much the entire point of the gun, as it is excessively bulky, heavy, and overcomplicated all to achieve that feature. So it bothered me a little that the only widely available airsoft renditions were the Tokyo Marui and KTW Springers, there's also the Sheriff Full Auto Bullet Valve version, but that's an odd duck and there are only a few dozen in the world, I wanted a proper semi-auto SPAS. So the concept was simple. Take the semi-auto Marzen M1100 system, at the time pretty much the only semi-auto airsoft shotgun and a shell ejector at that, and fit it to a Tokyo Marui SPAS-12 body. My original work was crude. I was in college and had minimal access to appropriate tools and made some decisions that would prove to be mistakes. So we're not going to talk too much about the original and instead focus on the revised version. Let's walk through the externals and then take it apart. The gun uses a standard Tokyo Marui barrel, but an ASG SPAS-12 shroud. I should clarify that the externals are a mix of reused Marui parts from the original build and new donors from an ASG SPAS-12, but while there are some subtle differences, they're generally interchangeable. By default, the front bracket is completely blocked off, and the magazine tube extension screws onto the front, while on my original conversion I cast a duplicate of that front block in resin, which worked but didn't look great and started to crumble over time. This time around we used a drill press to incrementally bore out the front, which was a tedious process but ultimately worked out, allowing the Marzen tube to fit through. We then just epoxied some of the cosmetic parts from the Marui SPAS-12 tube to the Marzen tube, which limits how far it can screw in. Note that the barrel is also epoxied to this block, providing key structural support. Moving back to the pump, because this is now a semi-auto gun, the pump isn't needed for cycling. However, as with the original conversion, we installed an action arm that reaches back to the receiver, so pulling on the pump cycles the action. This time, we also epoxied a small detent to the shroud concealed by the grip, which keeps the pump in place until sufficient force is applied. Ideally, we would like to replicate the authentic selection system of the real thing, which is this button on the bottom of the pump, but there didn't appear to be any good way to engineer it, so this will suffice for now. The receiver is ASG, and this secures to the shroud with the rear sight screw as on the original TM design. The receiver has been substantially modified, with the fake bolt cut out entirely to produce a functional ejection port. A machine screw serves as a cross pin to prevent the receiver from flexing outwards. The trigger guard has also been changed, with the cross bolt safety rendered non-functional by some internal adjustment, the lever safety locked in place, and the front cut off entirely to provide clearance for the carrier and tube. The pistol grip is a standard Tokyo Marui, modified on the back to accommodate the Marzen grip screw, but the stock is actually KTW. The original version used a KTW grip mated to the Marui receiver, and that was a big mistake, requiring ugly reinforcement to hold it all. This solution is cleaner and much stronger. Note also that there's a macro line routed through the grip, because this gun has been converted for use of HPA. And then the whole thing aside from furniture was refinished with paint to get an appropriate look. That's it for externals, so let's take it apart and show a little more about how this actually goes together. First, we unscrew the magazine extension tube and remove the spring and follower. Next, we unscrew the front securing screw on the shroud and remove the barrel and front bracket. By removing the faux mode selection button on the pump, we expose the screws securing the pump to the action arms. Once those are removed, the pump can be pulled off the shroud, which reveals the detent mentioned earlier, which keeps the pump in place until sufficient pressure is applied. Now we move to the back of the gun. 
Taking out the grip screw and removing the HPA fitting allows the grip to come off the back. Removing the cross screw frees the trigger guard. And lastly, the charging handle comes off with one screw, which finally allows the Mars and internals to slide out the back. So internally, this is a Marzen M1100 system that's been converted for HPA, and the extractor has been drilled out and replaced with a screw cut to shape, but otherwise the internal workings of the gun are unchanged. Some modifications have been made to interface with the SPAS-12 parts, though. The SPAS-12 trigger has been pinned and epoxied in front of the actual trigger so that it can clear the rear end of the trigger guard when assembled, and a simple ABS rectangle has been epoxied to the internal gas block with a corresponding piece on the trigger guard and this is what prevents the trigger guard from sliding forwards. So essentially, the trigger guard is held inside the receiver by the cross screw, kept from moving forwards by these blocks, and kept from moving backwards by the grip. Speaking of the grip, this has been internally routed for the HPA line and cleared as well to accommodate the Mars and grip screw, which threads in the back. This secures the grip to the Mars and internals. Then at the front, the magazine tube extension prevents the Mars and internals from coming out the back, and the barrel indexes to the internals via two small tabs. All in all, the Mars and internals are being pulled forwards by the magazine tube while also pulled backwards by the grip screw and then locked in place by the cross pin, and that keeps everything nicely solid. The only other thing to talk about internally is the pump mechanism, and that's just a simple linkage which is kept aligned by the pump grip. When the pump is actuated, the linkage pushes on the faux bolt of the Mars and internals to cycle the gun. So, operation is simple. Hook it up to about 100 PSI input, load 7 shells into the tube, manually cycle it with either the pump or the charging handle to load the first, load one more shell for a total of 8, and then it fires as quickly as the trigger is pulled. The Mars and M1100 does not have any kind of cutoff to prevent firing when no shell is loaded, so avoiding dry fire requires keeping track of ammo and reloading whenever possible. This does make it possible to cheat by simply dry firing when empty to load a new round, but come on, what's the fun in that? Anyways, ergonomically, it's not awful. With the rebuilt body, it's considerably more stable and durable than the previous incarnation, so it can be safely manipulated one-handed, even with the stock folded. It also helps that this is notably lighter than a real SPAS-12 at just 6.5 pounds unloaded, which is about two-thirds that of the real thing. With the stock unfolded, the center of balance is right at the front of the receiver, making it pretty comfortable to swing around, despite its size, and while it is quite a long gun, the folding stock produces a shorter length of pull than most combat shotguns, and in fact it is identical to the ubiquitous M16A1 length, or M4 clicked in one notch, most commonly used on modern rifles. That helps a lot in ZUB, as do the simple irons. The front sight is a tall blade, and the rear sight has a small notch at the bottom intended for slugs, while the wider aperture above it provides a slightly elevated, quickly acquired sight picture for shot. With the spread on the Marzen system, the notch isn't particularly useful, but the wide aperture makes the front sight easy to pick up even in low light, and genuinely works for holding on corners. The trigger is unmodified from the stock M1100. It presses directly on the gas release valve, but uses a ball bearing detent to click between two positions. There's no take up whatsoever, it just clicks back when enough force is applied and then clicks forwards when released. It's not a good trigger, but it's easy to double tap when needed. This combination of good handling, short length to pull, usable sights, and quick trigger makes for a pretty capable CQB blaster. And then that brings us to actual firing performance. Each shell holds up to 9 BBs, and the gun fires all of them at once through a fixed hop up. What's interesting about this system is that the muzzle velocity doesn't change significantly with BB count, staying under one joule regardless of how many loaded or what weight, so we don't have to worry about accidentally loading just one BB and sending some poor rental to the Shadow Realm. Also interesting is that the spread varies depending on the BB count. With the full 9 BBs, it's a video game-like room-clearing cone of death, but with 3-5 to five BBs, it puts them all close to point of aim, albeit with inconsistent hop. This just isn't really a good gun for outdoor use. And yes, this is a shell ejector, and yes, it does require policing shells. We've noticed that for some reason airsofters hyperfixate on this detail, but it's really not a big deal. 
a shell catcher works, but in a CQB environment, we usually just let shells fall and then pick them up when dead or take two minutes at the end of the round. We find it just isn't nearly as big a problem as it's made out to be online, and more importantly, the raw performance it enables, 9 BBs per shot as quickly as you pull the trigger, more than makes up for the minor inconvenience. Does the Flak 10 do that without needing shells? Yes. Can you get one for a sane price? No. Sucks to suck. Now what is a legitimate problem is that the Mars and M1100 is a fickle platform that requires a lot of tuning and attention to make it reliable. Even a change as small as increasing or decreasing the input pressure can cause it to fail to eject reliably, and inevitably it will stop feeding from the magazine tube due to peening of the shell latches, requiring periodic full disassembly to reshape them. And that's on top of the extractor replacement, which is necessary sooner or later on all these guns. In fact, it actually took longer to get the M1100 internals to run reliably than it took to convert the SPAS-12 externals to fit. Frankly, this was a fun project, but I'm burnt out on Marzins. I still love the SPAS-12, but if I ever want to create another gas version, I'll probably build it around a different base gun. Regardless, after much blood, sweat, and tears, this gun does work. It's effective at our usual CQB arenas and tremendously fun to use. We hope you enjoyed this look at one of our favorite pieces of custom work, and as always, thank you for watching.